Hello Rockville, here's what you need to know about your city. We'll enjoy a concert under the stars, catch up with the Charter Review Commission, and we go one-on-one -on -one with Councilmember Tom Moore at the Goody facility. All that and more in this October edition of Rockville's 11. Hello and welcome to Rockville's 11. I'm your host, Bridget Breuer. We start off this show with a review of the city's charter. We had the chance to catch up with former mayor and chair of the Charter Review Commission, Steve Van Grack, to find out more about what the commission is all about. The charter is really like the constitution of the city. It creates the city government and the form of government that we have. Formed by the mayor and council in April of 2012, the Charter Review Commission is evaluating Rockville's charter regarding the structure of the city's government. We're focusing in on the election process and uh, we're, we're looking at uh, how many members of the mayor and council do we have? Uh, should we have term limits? How long should they serve? It's now two years. Should it be four years? We're looking at when the elections are held. They're held in odd years, 2013, 15, 17. Should we hold them in the years that the federal and state government have their elections? We're looking at whether we should have a full-time mayor. We're looking at issues that really explore the type of government that we have and should we make any changes. And with these issues under review, how can residents get involved? We're going to have five town hall meetings throughout the city of Rockville during the month of October and we'll announce that to everybody and we would love to hear from the citizens on these issues. We, we really think that's a, an extremely important part of this process. The last time Rockville's charter was reviewed was in 2002. The mayor and council decide every 10 to 20 years to review the charter, which Van Grack considers to be a great strength for the city. It's a great city and if we can make it better, if the people want to make the changes and make it better, then we'll do that. For your voice to be heard about the city's charter, attend one of these public meetings throughout the month of October. And now for a historical perspective on the city's charter, our Jennifer Ligsay has more. That's right, Bridget. While the city's charter is currently up for review, we wanted to take a look at its history and what this means for Rockville today. Executive Director of Peerless Rockville, Mary Van Balgoy, was able to take us back to the year when the charter was first established. The charter was originally founded when we became incorporated as a city, um, and that was in 1860. Before this, in 1776, Rockville was considered a county seat. During this time, any issues citizens wanted to change had to be authorized by the Maryland State Assembly and Montgomery County Commissioners. In 1860, the citizens of Rockville got together and they petitioned the legislature to become a city. And by that, that created our charter, telling us the town limits, for example, also set up the structure of government and that we could pass um, ordinances and laws as long as they were not contrary to state laws. And as the charter holds a great deal of history for the city, why is this important for residents today? The basic responsibilities that the charter lays out, and, and as well as challenges, they remained unchanged since 1860. Um, with self-government, we are responsible for our own finances here, um, or I should say the city government is. It also requires that the city government provide services to its citizens and is responsible to its citizens. So these are all important factors that we need to remember. To learn more about the Charter Review Commission, visit rockvillemd.gov and search Charter Review. Now for our regular feature, Mayor and Council one-on-one. -on -one. This month, Councilmember Tom Moore tours the Goody facility with Fleet Manager Pat Stroud for our number 10 spot. Two years and $4.2 million later, Phase 2 of the Goody facility project is complete, with several new additions that will improve efficiency and working conditions for city staff who are on the front lines of providing critical city services. I think the newest stuff that we were replacing was 20 years old, and that was the new stuff. The new facility has only gained about 6,700 feet in size, but was significantly increased in height, and Councilmember Moore is pleased with the final result. This is terrific. I mean, this is a part of the city that people don't know exists uh, if they haven't been taken here. Uh, before I got involved with the city government, I thought everything was done at City Hall. And I'm just astonished by the scale of the operations out here. Complete with an automated lube system, a new air compressor, and an all-new truck tire machine, the new facility will help city operations run more smoothly than in the past. For example, back during the blizzard of 2010, the old shop could not accommodate larger vehicles, which caused delays on repairs. Having the right infrastructure and technology in place is something Councilmember Moore says is essential. 
it can make the difference between getting our streets cleared and not getting our streets cleared. It can make the difference between uh, getting our leaves picked up and not getting the leaves picked up. I mean, it's between you know, having the streets clear for people to be you know, rushed to a hospital if they need it and not. I mean, it, it can be life or death what they do here. Phase one and two cost an estimated $10 million. So who paid for the renovations? Yeah, you know, we did a little bit out of operating budget, but most of it was bonds. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we should use bonds for in, in building things. This is going to last us a good long time. This is a, a solid city facility. It's an absolutely essential part of what the city uses to do get its job done. And this is this is what bonds are for. With more than half of the city's employees working at the Goody facility, Tom Moore had only one thing to say. Everything kind of physical that the city does is done here. And it's uh, it's so important to what the city does. And I just want to thank you. One fun fact we wanted to share about the project, the material storage bin where sand, dirt and stone are stored was actually built in only five days. The city subcontracted with a Mennonite group who got the job done in record time. They were just excellent workers. They just outstanding. Best part of the project I've seen so far. Keep it on Rockville 11 for more updates to the Goody facility. In our Meet Your Neighbor segment, our Rocio Snowdy interviews Murray Stein for this number nine story. Hi, I'm Rocio Snowdy. I am here at the Rockville Senior Center with a good neighbor whose passion for woodworking and love for volunteering began its journey here 22 years ago. All the work I've done has been right here in the Senior Center's wood shop. His style of work is multifaceted. He usually makes hollow form vessels, but also makes conventional sculptures all out of wood. I specialize in something called turning, which means using a lathe, a machine on which you mount a piece of wood, spin it at a high speed, and using special chisels. Uh, I contour the wood, I hollow the inside, I shape the outside, and make whatever kind of hollow form vessel I want to make. In 1998, Mr. Stein was awarded the first Path of Achievement Award in the Arts and Humanities, which designated him a living treasure in the state of Maryland. It's a passion for me. Uh, it gives me an outlet, and, and an outlet for my creative desires from making things that look like they're impossible to make. His love for woodworking and volunteering is another reason he is one of the city's good neighbors. I don't sell anything. Uh, I have a core collection which gets me into museums, but a lot of the things that I've made, uh, I give away to organizations of my choice. I have given many things to the Senior Center. It's a wonderful place. I show my appreciation by giving back. It's, it's really important for me. It was something instilled in me by my dad um, that uh, you're part of a large group. People need people, they're not, they shouldn't be loners. They, by giving back, the rewards are so great, it, it's hard to describe. Seniors have so much knowledge and so much skill. Uh, why take them with them when they leave the big party here? Why not share some of that with, with others? If you know someone who is a special neighbor and would like to highlight their story, or if you would like more information about our Good Neighbor Award program, log on to rockvillemd.gov. For Rockville 11, I'm Rocio Snowdy. The Rockville Senior Commission recently sponsored an event called Concert Under the Stars. We had the chance to attend, and here's the recap in our number eight spot. Well, the Rockville Senior Commission had this idea um, to have an outdoor concert underneath the stars. So it is the first time we've done this, and we'll probably do many more and some other fun things. It kind of goes along with our new expansion that we've done to the Senior Center. It's just all the new things that we're doing around the center. It's the first senior outdoor concert, and this is something that we want to see more of in Rockville, is this kind of um, just enjoyment of where we live and our wonderful Rockville band and just getting together. So it's, it's a great night. I was especially looking forward to this band concert tonight. It's terrific that they here they are from Rockville, and uh, I imagine the neighbors can hear them too. And, it's great. There may be some people getting up to dance in a little bit, and I'm going to watch that. I brought my camera. <laughs> and I think it's an important time for us to, to focus on our patriotism and, and making our country stronger. And I think it, it was a good opportunity for the seniors to be here together.
and this whole event could not be could never take place without the cooperation of the whole city. Many different agencies were involved, and they were so supportive that it was uh, just a pleasure. And but we've learned a lot, and so next year, all those people remember we're coming back. Every year, the city has a chance to say thank you to its many volunteers. We had the chance to cover the recent volunteer appreciation party for our number seven story. Well, we're here tonight to uh, join our voices and say thank you to all our wonderful volunteers. Rockville is so fortunate to have so many people, our citizens, who really do get involved and want to help out. And they serve on boards and commissions and all kinds of things. So we're here to say thank you. Well, so much of the work done in Rockville is done by volunteers, volunteers on boards and commissions, and volunteers throughout the city. And it's so important to recognize them and, and have at least this event each year um, for, all the, for all of them to get together. It's, it's a great night. It's important to me because if I live in a community, I want to be involved with my community and do what I can just to participate and to make the better world for tomorrow for the people come after me. Right. To say I think it's a wonderful opportunity, not only to thank the people who do what they do for us, for right out of their hearts, essentially. It's their free time, and they give it up to the city. And of course, it's our chance to celebrate the staff as well. It really works very hard to make this a wonderful city. You know, 365 days a year, we have Rockville citizens participating in every bit of the Rockville city life and city government. And this is the one day a year that we can say thank you. And it, it means a lot to every citizen in this city that we get so much help from so many people. And most of them are here tonight. I think that it's nice also for the citizens to be able to mix and mingle with the city staff and get to know them because that's the uh, the ch exchange of information with um, city staff is really valuable and I think it's it certainly has been to me and particularly with the senior center and I've been really involved with that from the very beginning and so I think lots of people here as I look around they've all played a role in making this city better through the years there are many ways to get involved in the city. You can serve on a board or commission, coach a team, or be a mentor. To learn more, go to rockvillemd.gov and search volunteer. Rockville prides itself on being proactive when it comes to pedestrian safety. We wanted to follow up on a story we brought to you a couple months ago, and our Jennifer Ligsay has the story. I'm Jennifer Ligsay, and I'm standing here on Rockville Pike, where the relocation of this bus stop behind me is starting to make a difference when it comes to pedestrian safety. We recently covered the issue of jaywalking on Rockville Pike. Rockville's pedestrian and bicycle coordinator, Matt Folden, has the latest on what was done to handle the problem. In order to address that, we uh, coordinated with Montgomery County Department of Transportation and WMATA, ride, uh, WMATA bus and actually relocated the bus stop a few hundred feet north here to the intersection to really encourage people to cross at the signalized crosswalk. I think it remains to be seen at this point because it's very early on, but we are seeing a reduction in the amount of jaywalking, certainly. And while the relocation of the bus stop has begun to make a difference, what else is being done to improve pedestrian safety? We've started actually an interdepartmental pedestrian safety work group with representatives from the police, the city manager's office, uh, and various departments related to uh, pedestrian safety, whether it be the infrastructure or education efforts. And uh, one of the things that we've done recently is printed up uh, pedestrian safety cards that encourage pedestrians, particularly in this corridor, to cross the street safely. And we've done that in a couple of different languages in order to reach everybody uh, successfully who, who's crossing in this area. And with school now in session, Folden has a few tips on how to stay safe on the road. It's getting darker earlier, so a lot of activities are going to be pushed into the evening hours. You'll see uh, twilight start a lot earlier. So you need to be aware of the vehicles, make sure that they can see you before you cross the street, wear light-colored clothing, and uh, I would suggest making eye contact with the drivers just to be sure that they've seen you and they're aware of your intention to cross the street. To learn more about pedestrian safety in the city, visit rockvillemd.gov transportation. For Rockville's 11, I'm Jennifer Ligsay. Now for an update on the city's white-tailed deer situation for our number five spot. As part of the recommendations from the city's white-tailed deer task force, Rockville is moving forward with implementing a camera survey to study the deer population. Hey, we're heading down to uh, calling this area one, which is uh, the center of a hundred acre plot in the city of Rockville. And we're going to uh, put some corn out to bait the deer to come in 
so we can do a deer camera survey. Parks and Facilities Supervisor Mark Kibalowski has been setting up a trial run of the cameras to get ready for the actual data collection in December. Uh, the camera's an infrared camera. It'll take, uh, you can set it, for, time stamp it, but you also get, uh, you can set it for particular intervals. The cameras will photograph deer within a particular area, which will then provide data on the amount of the deer per acre and per square mile within the city in that particular area. This camera survey is part of the direction given by the mayor and council in December after the Whitetail Deer Task Force made their recommendations. The city is also under guidance by the Montgomery County Deer Working Group to study the deer population. Once the camera survey is completed with the guidance of the county's wildlife biologists, the data will be reviewed and an annual report will be given. To learn more about the city's Whitetail Deer Management Plan, go online to rockvillemd.gov and search deer. The city's Code Enforcement and Community Enhancement Division of the Police Department handles landlord-tenant affairs in the city. We had a few frequently asked questions we wanted to get answers to for our number four story. Meet Christina Casarella Berry. She's the city's landlord-tenant specialist. City of Rockville landlord-tenant Christina speaking. She's on call to help landlords and tenants in the city. Well, I answer questions that landlords or tenants may have, um, you know, in regards to their rights as landlords and tenants. Rockville City Code is the rule book for the city. Chapter 18 focuses on the rights of landlords and tenants, and Chapter 5 handles property maintenance issues. Now some other frequently asked questions. How long does a landlord have to return a security deposit? They have 45 days from the date that you move out. How much interest is applied to a security deposit? 3%, and that actually started October 1st of 2004. How much notice does a renter have to give to a landlord? Well, I would definitely refer to the lease. Um, a lot of times the lease may some say, state something different, um, but usually it's 30 days for a single family home and it's 60 days notice for an apartment complexes. Can a landlord evict a tenant if they're one day late with rent? They can. Um, that's why I would definitely recommend keeping the lines of communication open. I mean, things are happening daily and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, a landlord is understanding, but, you know, it's also their, their source of income. So, you know, letting them know what's going to happen is, is always helpful. When is rent due? It's usually due the first, um, unless you agree upon a different date, but that should also be stated in the lease. Is it important to have a lease agreement with a tenant or landlord? It's not required for the city, but I highly recommend it. Um, it just, even if it's just a simple sheet that has your name, you know, landlord tenant name and the address and how much security deposits given, how much rent um, per month is given, just something so you have it in writing. And it, it'll help both the landlord and the tenant. For more information about the landlord tenant affairs in the city, go online to rockvillemd.gov and search landlord tenant. The city is working to update its fire code. We wanted to find out more in our number three spot. The city is ready to align their fire safety code with the state of Maryland. Aaron Smith from the city's fire marshal's office tells us why this is a good thing. We are amending it to align with the requirements of Montgomery County and the city of Gaithersburg to improve uh, the operational capabilities of the fire department, assist in streamlining what it is that they do, and to codify some of the best practices that we've identified in the city of Rockville. The code includes requirements for general fire safety, building safety, hazardous materials, and adopts a number of very important standards such as those involving sprinkler and fire alarm installation. The city's fire marshal's office is in the inspection services division of the planning department. Inspectors and plans examiners make sure that new buildings and developments meet the city code. The city does not conduct its own fire suppression operations. That's handled by the county. But an update to the city's fire code should make the job of firefighters easier. Montgomery County is responsible for fire suppression throughout the entirety of the county. Within the municipalities of uh, the city of Gaithersburg and the city of Rockville, uh, we are responsible for our own fire code enforcement. We issue our own building permits. We do conduct our own inspections, so on and so forth. The city welcomes public comment on the proposed adoption of the code. Comments may be sent via the city clerk, by phone or email, or you can make your comments available during the public hearing on October 8th. The proposed code in its entirety may be viewed on our website at rockvillemd.gov slash ISD. Questions about the code may be directed to Aaron Smith by phone at 
314-8250 or by email at asmith at rockvillemd.gov. Also, we wanted to let you know Fire Prevention Week happens this month, and we wanted to find out more about what residents need to know to stay safe. This year's theme is No Two Ways Out. Here are some tips to follow. The goal is to teach children and adults to have an escape plan that includes two ways out of your home. Making an escape plan is easy, and you can use the following tips. Make a map of your home. Mark a door and a window that can be used to get out of every room. Choose a meeting place outside in front of your home. This is where everyone can meet once they've escaped. Write the emergency telephone number for the fire department on your escape plan. Have a grown-up sound the smoke alarm and practice your escape plan with everyone living in your home. Even though summer might be over, we wanted to let you know that the Rockville Farmer's Market is still in full swing. You can find the best in local produce, meats and cheeses every Saturday at the corner of Route 28 and Monroe Street. Go to rockvillemd.gov slash farmers to learn more. And coming in as our number one story, it's Quick Hits. We wanted to give you an update on the Rockville Summit. You're invited to participate in the second Rockville Summit happening Saturday, November 3rd at the F. Scott Fitzgerald Theater from 9 to noon. The first summit was held in October of 2011 and started a dialogue about the city, the regional economy, and Rockville's future. From this event, six working groups emerged to discuss and recommend action on specific Rockville themes. The final report of these working groups will be presented at the second Rockville Summit on November 3rd. For more information about the ongoing meeting of the summit working groups and the latest information on the November 3rd summit, see the city's website at rockvillemd.gov slash summit. Well, that's it for this October edition of Rockville's 11. I'm your host, Bridget Breuer, and on behalf of the whole team here, thanks for watching.